we have a person now who is extraordinarily famous. If you got the New York Times yesterday and you opened the, you, you, you got the business section out, there on the front page of the New York Times uh, was a wonderful photo of our next speaker. And all, all jokes aside though, I don't think there's anybody in this industry, uh, but you know, absolutely nobody in this industry who does more to promote our industry than Ron Suber. He is everywhere. I'm amazed at, uh, he, he's on the radio, he's on podcasts, he's on TV, he's on, he's quoted, if, there, if there's an article about Peter Pilenning, there you go, you get Ron Suber in the, in the quote there. He is everywhere. So I think uh, he's done uh, a tremendous amount, not just for Prosper, but I think all of us here uh, owe a debt of gratitude to Ron Suber for really raising, raising the profile of this industry. So without any further ado, please put your hands together for the president, president of Prosper, Ron Suber. So I am so excited to be up here today. For me, what's happening here today is more than just business. Working at Prosper is more than just a job. This is my passion, it's my hobby. I've never had more fun and I'm learning a ton. When I walked around the room where all the booths are and I heard the presentations today, I think we witnessed emerging of science and art, and we saw a collision of Silicon Valley and Wall Street. And we saw a fin and a tech, we saw financial and technology come together perhaps for the first time. In the prime brokerage business where I started my career, it was $300 billion industry and went to a $3 trillion industry. And we created a shared experience, the people in the rooms at the conferences over 15 years of building the prime brokerage business. And much of that's happening here today. Those of us who are at Lend It last year and this year, five years from now, people will wonder what was it like in the beginning, in the revolution, when disruption first happened. People often ask Aaron and Steve and I, what was it like? to join Prosper in January of 2013, doing $9 million of monthly origination business, to last month doing over $100 million of business. We all have our answers and they're all different. Mine is, I slept like a baby. I got up every two hours and cried. When I think about this conference last year, I think about the room with 300 people. I think about the conversations that were discussed and the imbalance in the marketplace. So what I want to do today is similar to what we did last year, not really talk about Prosper, but talk about what's happening to everybody in the room. What's happening to the consumer? What are the trends? What's happening at every single platform you've met and heard from today? There are six major themes and six things each platform is focused on, and we're gonna quickly go through those. And then I wanna talk about three things I learned for sure this past year that I didn't know a year ago. So let's talk about the consumer and the industry and where we're going in this new lending business. So have you ever looked around in every part of your life and seen things change? You stared at something and said, wow, it's been the same way for 30 or 40 years. It could be an ATM machine, or it could be a lot of other things, and you just said there must be a better way. We've had thermostats that literally haven't changed. We had phones that only made phone calls. We had 10 pound, $5,000 laptops. We used to stand on corners and wave our arms or stand in line in the rain for taxi cabs. And if we wanted to sell something as consumers, we put an ad in the paper on Wednesday hoping it would appear on Sunday. That's all changed. The platforms have changed, the consumers changed, and we now have these innovative things that are changing consumer behavior and how we interact in every corner of our life. And the speed of disruption, the quickness that these platforms are coming into our lives and changing is faster and faster. And they're changing deeper parts, 
how we store data, how we buy things, how we watch things, how we travel, and clearly how we pay. Despite regulatory and legislative and political issues, each of these platforms overcame highly regulated industries, highly political industries, industries that had not changed due to unions or other issues. Does that sound familiar to anybody in this room? Isn't that what we're all doing? Creating platforms, adopting consumers, changing, and entering markets that are highly regulated, political, and lots of people who are embedded in doing business the old way. That's exactly what the people in this room are doing. We're disrupting the consumers in student loans with Common Bond and SoFi, in business loans with On Deck and the 20 other platforms here disrupting business loans, in real estate with Realty Mogul, and in debt consolidation and consumer credit with Prosper and Lending Club. And we're gonna see farmland and insurance and mortgages and all these other areas come to the Lend It Conference next year and present their disruptive, innovative, revolutionary new ways for consumers to behave. We are changing consumer behavior for good in this room, and it's not going back. People will not borrow money and conduct business the old way after they've had a taste of the platforms that each of us are solving for. So we talked about disruptions on some of those other innovative platforms. What does disruption look like in personal finance? It looks like all of us. We, the marketplace lenders, the online direct lenders, and the peer-to-peer -peer finance community are turning this manual process of filling out forms, sending them to call centers, waiting for months for people to come back to us in these automated exchanges. We are democratizing credit around the country and around the world. We have exchanges to trade listed equities and over-the-counter equities and options and futures and commodities, and there are multiple changes. In financial services, there is no winner-take-all. It's a diverse community. Finally, together, collectively, we are creating exchanges for credit for borrowers and lenders for the very first time. So what's happened this past year, not just at Prosper, but in this whole industry? We have seen dramatic growth on the investor side and on the borrower side. Look at the number of loans between Prosper and Lending Club in 2013, and look at the first quarter with Prosper and Lending Club already. Really rapid changes, going from 77 million in March to 100 million in April, we're really starting to see borrowers become aware and lenders and investors continue to come to these platforms. As Peter said, we've been on a media frenzy. Noah, Renault, Cagney, myself, we have been traveling the country, educating and talking to anybody who would listen. And we're starting to focus on the borrowers, and this is one of the key things I wanna leave everybody with today, what's happening with the borrowers. And the term here for all of us is E, A, and U. It's education, it's awareness, and understanding. We have to educate the borrowers in each of our platforms, continuing to disrupt and meet the needs of the borrowers with the solutions we're bringing to the table. Each platform that I've seen today has additional capital, more capital than they had last year, and strength in partnerships with BlackRock and Google and other venture capital firms. So let's get right to it. I've actually met with every single platform that was here today over the past 16 months. And I'd like to go through six things that each and every platform is focused on, and if they're not, they should think about each one of these. This business is all about quality. If we keep diversifying our borrower channels and diversifying our ways we get these borrowers through traditional marketing and digital marketing, we can really grow this business. We cannot be a direct mail business like some of the banks. It's all about quality and finding new types of borrowers in the right way. Improving the mobile and borrower experience. If a platform does not have a mobile solution in 2015, it will not be at this conference in 2016. It is the way the millennials and the Gen X and the Gen Y are doing business 
By having mobile solutions, we can gather driver's licenses and all the information we need quicker and easier to continue to shorten that validation and verification time and process. It's really about the borrower experience. That was one of the first things that Aaron and Steve and I did at Prosper was really understanding how do the borrowers get to us? How is that onboarding process? The easier that is, the easier it is for all of us to grow. This is critical. So when we got to Prosper, there were all retail lenders and $9 million of loan originations. What we had to do was go figure out how do we diversify our lender base, more retail, and more institutional lenders that could join the platform to help it grow. We had to understand everybody's capacity, how many dollars every month or quarter were they willing to invest, what were their return expectations to make sure that we were delivering to them what they expected from us. We needed to know their commitment and we needed to really balance it out with retail. I will go on a limb and say something today. It is not going to be, we are not going to see a platform with retail only. This marriage of institutional and retail has to happen on each of these platforms to make it scale and grow. Continuous improvement. Just because we got to 100 million or another platform got to another big number, we have to continually iterate and improve the pricing, credit, and risk models that each of us deliver to our borrowers and to our investors. Continuously improve the fraud and identity screens, the validation and verification process. Lowering our cost per acquisition, how much we pay to get the right borrowers that fit on each of our platforms. This is one of the keys to profitability and to sustaining 100-year companies in this new marketplace. Transparency and trust, mutual benefit for both investors and borrowers. It's something through data and communication and blogging and social media, really, really working on improving the trust and benefit and how we communicate to both sides and not just one. Risk models that work. We've seen risk models that look like this in the curve. The A's may yield this and the B's yield less and the C's yield more. We need to have risk models that work. The, the double A's and the A's have yields and it goes up and it may flatten towards the end. We need to not only have risk models that work, but they change as the interest rates change, as unemployment change, as credit cards change, as the risk-free rate of return changes. All these other supply and demand things are critical for the risk people, pricing, risk, and credit, to have models that work, and we deliver on the gross return with the estimated loss minus our fees and collections and servicing that that return expectations in line with what we said would happen to the investors. Making larger loans where appropriate and expanding into new categories. As we get better, as we get smarter, as we get more data and become even bigger data companies, we're able to do bigger loans to the AA and A and B, high FICO, low debt to income, high income borrower. And we can do more loans, although they're smaller, four, five, and $6,000 loans in that C, D, and E category. It's all about making loans where appropriate, pricing credit where it belongs, and not behaving like some of the banks or credit card companies, and not giving people the credit they deserve. So this is what we've been doing. We've literally been going across the country, meeting with anybody who would meet with us, from traditional media to the investment banking conferences, literally to the regulators in all aspects, the Treasury in DC, the Fed in New York, OCC, FDIC, and really anybody who will listen. The Small Business Administration, I was at the Milken Conference last week, we've been to all the securitization conferences, we're doing a meetup in Chicago on Thursday and all kind of ways to tell this story, to share what this is and what this isn't collectively in this room. So let's talk about the investors. What's in it for them? What did they get from all of us this past year? In general, we performed. The loans performed as we said. We did the risk curves, our estimated losses, our collections and servicing. They're very happy. In fact, many of the loans performed better than we thought. We talked about it earlier. We've eliminated the high frequency traders who were coming in too fast and creating this arms race that really wasn't gonna end well with speed bumps and governors to make sure it was an even fair playing field. Frequent and high cash flow. These investors love these loans that we are producing as an industry. 
there is no similar product that pays monthly that's such a short duration that has the income and cash flow that we're generating in this room. We had institutional investors and we had retail investors. Today we have active who try to come in and cherry pick and re-rank our whole portfolio. We have passive who come in and just say, I want to index your portfolio. We have passive who may came, come in and just say, I want double A's and A passive. We have a new ETF and index fund that was announced last night. We have some funds with leverage. We have money managers, wealth managers, registered investment advisors, and lots of retirement accounts flooding into this marketplace because of the yield and the ability to defer in a retirement account all this ordinary income. Like Apple, who has the Apple Store and this whole ecosystem, we now have it too. We have so many firms coming to us building tools for investors, both retail and institutions, to buy loans, to sell loans for secondary market across all the platforms. And this low duration, I think this is one of the concepts when we talk to investors, while we have 36 month term and 60 month term, the reality is the duration, the amount of time you get the money back, is much, much less than that 36 month or 60 month because of the straight line amortization of principal and interest and prepayments. So let's talk about the borrowers. What did we do as a community for the borrowers? We increased the efficiency and the speed of them onboarding to us. We used to ask for bank account information or social security information way too quickly, way too soon in the onboarding process. We've come up with ways for the borrowers to upload documents to us, to take pictures of them, to scan them on mobile devices, and really helped our electronic verification so we don't need as much paper, which has really enabled us to close the gap eight days, nine days to fund. It's now three and a half days by the time the borrower comes to us, we approve. They send us the documentation, the fund and the money's in their account. Half of our loans are funded in two days, as long as the borrower is giving us the information we require. So we're gonna go beyond debt consolidation. It's not just a credit card solution anymore. We're seeing lots of loan demands for large purchases medical procedures, special occasions, automobiles, recreation vehicles. Taxes were due for many people on April 15th. We saw a large rise in people coming to these platforms looking for capital in a hurry for their taxes. And the other area that I'm excited about are people who are entrepreneurs. And we've learned this from meeting with the Small Business Administration and some of the regulators. The banks in general are not lending to small businesses. They have good personal credit, but they're being asked to personally guarantee or put up collateral for the small business loan, and they need it in a hurry. So these small businesses where the entrepreneurs have good credit, 640 and higher, are now coming to our platforms, borrowing on their personal credit with the purpose of their business. And we see this as a very big opportunity for our industry, and in particular for Prosper. And yes, we've seen lower rates. When I started investing at Lending Club and Prosper in 2010, yes, they were double digit. We are seeing lower rates. It's because our pricing risk and credit is iterative and there's a little bit of imbalance between the investors and the borrowers. So we can't not talk about the banks. We have been educating the banks. We have been making them aware and helping them understand we're here to help solve the issues they're having with their customers. So I took out the top five banks, we all know who they are, and we did a study on the next 188 banks. And we scoured their documentation, their websites, the material they mailed. 42 don't even market a personal loan on the website, and 66 minimized it, it was almost impossible to find it. 121 of these banks didn't even have the product. And of the banks we could find, many of them said, fill out this form and mail it to us, or come see us at the branch. Banks, not all of them, are using credit cards to fund personal loans, and we are here to change that. We literally have banks introducing borrowers to us, trusting our pricing, credit, and risk, our customer service, our underwriting, our servicing, 
and we are then selling loans back to the banks where it fits in the platforms. They now know who we are. They are not our competition. It's much more clear between us and the banks. We at Prosper are working very closely with credit unions around the country, large community banks, and regional banks that have really spent the time and dug into the data to realize that we are part of the solution and they're not spending the time or technology and can't make money on these loans anyway given they haven't innovated quite the way that we have. When we think about Prosper and this industry, like we had Intel inside, Intel was powering so many different computers across many different platforms. We think that this marketplace lending, this online lending and peer-to-peer -peer lending will be inside the banks powering the relationship between the borrowers and the investors. So where are we today? We're at the tipping point. We're at the very top of this business. And the opportunity is right next to us. It's right under us. It's right in this room. And the challenge for each of us is on. It's on and it's here today. It's on because the consumer expectations are changing and they're continuing to change. My children don't buy music the way I did. They don't book travel the way I did. And they will not have a landline in their home. The consumer is changing. It's changing how she and he interact with the world in every aspect. And that's our challenge, is to meet and exceed the changing needs of these consumers, especially 40 and under, who are really comfortable doing business on the internet, online, on their mobile device, on their iPad, in hotels, and on airlines. Consumers are very rapidly understanding us, and they're adopting us, and they're bringing us to market. So the three things that I learned this year are that the total addressable market, now that's usually a revenue term, but I want to talk about in the dollars available for each of us to connect with investors and borrowers is much bigger than I thought. It's not just the $850 billion in credit cards, it's really $2.8 trillion is our collective addressable market, our opportunity. It's even bigger than I thought. The second thing I learned this year is that last year's lended, I said we were in the top of the second or maybe the top of the third inning. But what I realized was everything we did before today was just spring training. It was just practice. And that today should mark the top of the first inning for each of us to understand that the game began today. So last year, the most quoted comment that I had mentioned was that the competition wasn't in the building. It wasn't on the floor, and it wasn't in the room. It wasn't Lending Club competing with Prosper or the banks competing with us. It's this. It's education and awareness and understanding of the borrowers. I promise you, this is what we need to focus on together through radio, through podcasts, through blimps, through all kind of ways we need to tell the borrowers, business borrowers, yes, blimps, business borrowers, what was my idea? It's his. All the different borrowers that each of the platforms take care of, we need to continue to communicate. We need to continue to travel and do these events and work on our traditional marketing and our digital marketing and keep best practices. So when I think about disruption and revolution and a company that went into an industry that hadn't changed, that wouldn't change, that was mucked up with unions and all kind of old thinking policies is Tesla. They proved to the haters, they showed the doubters, and they really showed people that they were the vehicle of the future. They didn't just disrupt the automobile industry, but rockets and batteries and all kind of things. In particular, they've adopted to the customer, to the consumer. They've made the way we drive and buy cars very different than it was done before. And this is our opportunity, is to understand the consumer, to keep our customer experience continually improving, to meeting on the return expectations, because we, in this room, are the new frontier of disruption. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for a great speech. Um, how do we plan to reach all those uh, two or three trillion uh, debt holders, given the Latimer are sub, uh, you know, subprime and otherwise uh, have, have debt problems? 
So the question really is how are we going to get to all these different borrowers? Clearly, partnerships with financial education and financial reform sites, form, uh, forums in our country are critical. Clearly, social media, clearly educating the Small Business Administration, working with charities, working with all these other groups who have relationships with these borrowers, but they literally don't know we're here. It's Peter continuing to do this event. It's Dara and everybody else blogging using LinkedIn. We did a campaign, a social campaign, and we literally surpassed 10,000 people on Facebook in a week and helped the education and awareness of this. So I think it's a combination of traditional marketing, digital marketing, partnerships, affiliate relationships, co-branded deals, charities, all kinds of ways. But I think as long as we keep best practice and we continue to tell a similar story that we're a solution, competition, and keep the story straight, it's just a matter of time. It's changed so much in the 14 months that my partners and I have been at Prosper. I can't wait to tell the story a year from now about the borrower experience. Okay, well, I'm going I'm to ask my question now. So just on that borrower experience then, how, can you just tell, talk a little bit about, you mentioned mobile is super important. If you don't have it in 2015, you're not going to be here. So can you just describe <coughs> Like what, what exactly are you, are you going to be doing to really bring more borrowers on, from their phones applying for loans? Mm -hmm. So if we look at the App Store and uh, what people do on mobile, two thirds of the apps are used once or twice and they're literally deleted in the second month. We have to continue to educate the borrowers what's happening once they created a relationship with our platform. So let's just take an example of a borrower who comes to us 36 month loan, done deal, they get the money in a couple days. We take money out of their bank account now 36 times, right? And that's all they hear from us in general. If that borrower now has an app and we're communicating with them, hey, congratulations, hey, I see that your income went up and your debt to income ratio came down, you can borrow more. Or you're a high earner and not rich yet, you borrowed 10,000, I see you're making more, you can now borrow another 10. Or I see you're paying down your debt consolidation, would you like to do home improvement or I understand you're doing a vacation or a small business? It's the way we're going to communicate and continue to do repeat business and do more business with our existing clients. If we just all focused on doing more ECM, existing client marketing, using digital and using apps, I think we'll see this industry grow, not necessarily from new borrowers, but from many, many repeat borrowers, which become very profitable for each of the platforms. Anyone else? I think everyone's thirsty. So on that note, put your hands together for Ron Suda. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>